G'day folks. Oh, it's time for another one of those junkyard treasure videos. Today we got a Thai brand fan. I know a lot of you out there like fans and I find they're quite useful, especially on hot days. Still got good bearings in it. Uh, Pi is a rather reputable manufacturer of electronic appliances in Australia. At least, at least they used to be. I was always seeing old Pi VHSs and home theatre systems, mini hi-fis, that sort of stuff. Um, other various appliances. It's quite well made. It's all die-cast aluminium. No plastic. Quite heavy. I haven't tried it yet, but we'll do that in a minute. A few other little bits and pieces. We've got the coil from a frost-free fridge to use as a radiator on the uh, two-stroke bike project, if I ever get around to doing that. Um, can't remember what you call this. It's like a shipwright or wood woodworking tool. A pl hand plane. Of some description. That, I'm not really sure what it is. Well, that's a socket. But I, just noticed, I just noticed it said mercury balanced on it and figured it wasn't really supposed to go in the steel bin and get smushed into the ground. I think lake scraps already got enough mercury in it. Um, so I'll pull it apart and see if I can fix it. Just the point is supposed to sit down there when it's sitting upright. It does still work to a degree. And if you rotate it, the point is supposed to move with it. But the glass is gone and it's, been, it's a bit beat up. It's got a pointer down the guts of it too. So, I don't really know what that is. But for now, let's look at this fan. Alright, let's try this whole thing out on hot, uh, low speed for starters. Yeah, slow wind up. Yeah, slow, slow. Let's see if we've got power there. Housing hasn't become live, so that's a good sign. This will tell you if something, like a metal cased fan or something's got power going to the casing, like the earth's broken inside and something's shorting out. Like if this whole table were to become live, it's not earthed, if this table became live and I did that, the alarm would go off. But if I go up to the power lead, which has power in its proximity, even that far out. So that's alright. Not fast. Looks like one of the blades is a little bit bent. Yeah. It's not exactly a tornado, but it'd be good for a bedroom because it's quiet. I mean, I can't really hear it. Oh, a lot of modern pedestal fans, and particularly the nasty cheap crap you get today, they are so noisy and so flimsy. They always break. We've got three or four of them at work just for moving around the workshop, and they're all held together by duct tape and MIG wire. They just don't last a week without falling to bits. But that seems happy. I just lubed the motor too. I put a drop, drop of sliding surface oil down the motor. I'm happy with that. Give it a quick clean up and make a good bedroom fan. I was thinking of giving it to Brad, but he's got a whole collection already. I need a nice, clean, tidy example to keep in my bedroom just as a normal fan. I don't. Want, I didn't want to go out and buy one of those nasty little cheap pieces of crap. I'd rather wait until something like this comes along. At least I know this thing will still be working when I'm dead. 50, 60 years time, this thing would still be going. For those of you wondering what all these wires are on this frost tree coil, um, this one here is actually just a little package sensor cable tied onto the side of the coil. It's actually pressurised, it's waterproof. It's got a, it's like a thermal fuse or something in there. And it's also got a um, ice sensor. Like if that gets too cold, it'll know that it's really frozen up and then it'll go into defrost mode. And this has a defrost heater in it. 
which is what these other two wires are. Put 240 volts across that, and one of these coil loops, which goes over the surface of the coil, fairly coarse loop, will become hot. And it comes back, that one there. So it's on the outermost edge of the coil. The slightly fatter tubes are refrigerant. These ones along the outside are all heater. So they can be deleted if you don't want it. You can just pull them out. They should just pull out. Yeah, might as well leave them there. The reason I want to run these as radiators on the push bike project is because they're so light you can pick them up with your pinky finger. They're really light. But that being said, they don't have the biggest, sturdiest fins on them. So heat rejection might not be adequate. Even running two of them like in a triangle shape probably won't be enough. We've got various other coils. So there you have it. That's what a uh, frost-free freezer refrigerator coil looks like. This sits up in the top freezer, by the way. When I find another one at the yard, I'll show you how they're assembled. And in addition to that nice old fan, I also found this lovely set of earmuffs. Um, there are Hosiden brand, H-O-S-I-D-E-N, dynamic stereo headphone made in Japan, 8 ohms each. Um, they've got volume and tone control, bass treble, bias on each earmuff. They're a DH150ZS. They sound superb. There's a very slight break in this wire up here, which goes to the uh, right side earmuff. I think that's left and right, isn't it? It doesn't actually say what side's what. Oh no, they're left. Sorry, that's left side, that's right side. So the right side earmuff cups in and out if you wiggle, wiggle this cable here, but that's only a like standard speaker coax. You can make a new one of those easy enough. And they sound absolutely amazing. They've got good bass handling. Uh, they don't distort at high volume. They're a really, really nice earmuff. And they were in the same pile as the fan. It looked like a deceased estate clear out or something like that. Lots of rusty old spanners and tools and stuff that would take forever to sell at a garage sale, but shit that people like me would just love. Either that I never bothered with a garage sale and just threw anything metal looking in the, in the steel bin. There's even new oil filters and things for engines, some of them not that old. I've got two spare filters for the Datsun 1800, which is I think a $27 filter off the shelf. And they're all still within date, they're not old. But, yeah, it's amazing what people throw out. The guy who runs the yard was telling me it's, they used to do the actual pickups from deceased estates and the kind of shit that they throw out is just incredible. Like, he's fully stocked his workshop with tools and power tools, hand tools, the lot without ever having to pay for the stuff or just pay scrap value. Really good sound quality out of this. Like I said before, you can turn it up to the point where you nearly go deaf and you don't hear these things sounding like they're going to come apart. Whereas most, most modern headphones I've tried, you play heavy metal or something through them, it just sounds like the headphone's going to explode. They can't handle it, but these must be pro audio headphones. That's just playing Aerion's Day 11, Love. Uh, it's from the Human Equation album. Well worth looking at. It's a not so much a set band, it's a project by members of other bands like... Oh shit. Here's the main one. Um, Dream Theatre. James LeBray, we've got um, too many names to list. This actual video here lists their names and everything. I can't remember off the top of my head. There's too many late nights. That's what I was doing last night. I was at a Metalhead's place doing some head banging. But uh, yeah, well worth watching. I'll put the link. I'll put the link to the video in the description.